Hey, Retcon Raider here with another short video about one of my favorite unreleased games, Fallout Van Buren. So far we've taken a look at the game's general mechanics, as well as the main storyline. It's stuff that's been a lot of fun to talk about, but it's also fairly common knowledge for any fan of the franchise. So today I thought we'd start delving a bit deeper into the design documents. Today, I thought we'd take a look at the companions that you would have been able to recruit in Fallout Van Buren. Now, unfortunately, this is where we start running into the main issue with the Van Buren documents. While there's a lot of information in there, there aren't a lot of pictures. Many of the game's art assets were incomplete at the point where development was cancelled, and the design document made heavy use of rough sketches and placeholder art. Even more unfortunately, a lot of that placeholder art is copyrighted to third-party image services, so I can't risk showing it here. But I'll try to use appropriate reference images from the other Fallout games where possible. So, that said, let's get started. Recruitable companions have long been a staple of the Fallout series, included in every one of the canonical games in the series, and Van Buren would have been no exception. Poking through the various design documents shows that there were at least 15 different companions that you would have been able to recruit. That's a lot of ground to cover, so for the sake of brevity, I'll be splitting this up into two shorter episodes. The first one will focus on the eight more conventional human companions, and the second one will focus on the seven stranger inhuman companions. Now, I've already talked about two of these guys in my previous videos about Van Buren. Arcade Gannon and Joshua Graham, but it's worth briefly revisiting them both. Like I said in the last video, Arcade was largely undefined in the original design documents for Van Buren. The general concept was there. He was a former member of the Enclave who would join up with the player under unspecified circumstances, but many of the details surrounding that concept were changed. Some of the design documents state that the player would have met Arcade at Hoover Dam, but the Hoover Dam design document makes no mention of him, implying that he was either very early in development when the game was cancelled, or possibly that he was being cut from the final game. Now, obviously we learned a lot more about Arcade in New Vegas, but the original concept only seems to have some loose parallels. Both versions of Arcade were former members of the Enclave, but in New Vegas, Arcade kept this information secret, while in Van Buren, he didn't seem to go out of his way to keep that fact hidden. In fact, when first encountered, Arcade would have already been openly wearing a suit of Enclave combat armor. In addition, in New Vegas he was a talented doctor, but in Van Buren, there was no mention of him having any medical skills at all. Only science skills. In New Vegas, Arcade was linked with both Caesar's Legion and the followers of the Apocalypse but there was no mention of Arcade being affiliated with either of those groups in Van Buren. Though the Denver design document does mention that he was hanging around with the followers and possible NCR ties. The occasional references to him often note how his high science and repair skills can benefit the player, particularly in Burham Springs where he can help with identifying and repairing pre-war technology. Next, let's take another look at the Hanged Man, Joshua Graham. Van Buren would have featured characters from all over the karmic spectrum, and Joshua would have fallen squarely in the evil category. He was planned to be one of the strongest recruitable companions in the game, but this would have been offset by his bad luck, his bad reputation, and his murderous attitude. Not only would his mere presence immediately sour relationships between the player and the local tribes, but Joshua would have had the jinxed trait causing everyone around him, including the player, to suffer more critical fumbles in combat. As I stated in my previous video, Joshua's backstory is kept largely intact in New Vegas, though his personal perspective on it is altered. He was still a former high-ranking member of Caesar's Legion who just barely survived an execution attempt after a disastrous battle against NCR forces. In New Vegas, he was lit on fire and hurled into the Grand Canyon after failing to capture Hoover Dam. But in Van Buren, he was instead hung by the neck after the Legion suffered particularly heavy losses while capturing Fort Aradesh, later known as Fort Abandon. Originally, the developers had intended for Caesar's Legion to play a larger role in Van Buren, 
But as development moved forward, they drastically scaled back the Legion's presence, instead opting to set them up for a more prominent appearance in the sequel. Joshua Graham would have served as a large potential source of information about that impending threat. And speaking of the Legion, that brings us to our next companion, Alexandra, a bounty hunter employed by Caesar's Legion. The player would have encountered her as part of the main storyline while hunting down the other prisoners who had escaped from the Tibbetts facility. One of those prisoners, a super mutant named Blackjack, would be found in a blind canyon outside of Mesa Verde, where he had already been cornered by Alexandra. Alexandra would have initially been presented as an obstacle. She was intent on capturing Blackjack and turning him over to the Legion for use in their gladiatorial arenas, and she had no real interest in letting the player steal her bounty. The player would have ended up having to either negotiate with her, trick her, or kill her to continue their main quest. They could cooperate with her and help her bring Blackjack to the Legion camp in Denver, but that would be counterproductive, because it would make it even harder to get Blackjack back to the Tibbetts facility. But if the player cooperated or negotiated with Alexandra, there was a possibility that they would end up being able to recruit her, as long as they could prove it would be worth her while. From a story standpoint, Alexandra was portrayed as a cynical survivalist who had no empathy for people who relied on others to handle their problems. She would be a potentially useful companion with moderate special attributes and a focus in firearms, medic, and outdoorsman skills. But she would give the player a hard time if she felt that they were being too charitable or altruistic. Her cynicism, at least in part, would eventually be revealed to be a result of her backstory. Raised in the Mormon city of New Canaan, she ran away from home after a vicious argument with her parents, only to later find out that her entire family had been murdered by the refugees they had been trying to help. She subsequently forged a life for herself as a caravan doctor and then later as a mercenary for hire. But bringing her back to Jericho, the small town built in the ruins of New Canaan, would allow the player a brief glimpse of her more human side. Another prominent companion would have been Karisu, perhaps most notable for being the sister of Sulik, one of the more memorable companions from Fallout 2. In Fallout 2, it's mentioned that Karisu was kidnapped by slavers, and Sulik was on a quest to rescue her. This was actually a quest that was originally intended to be included in Fallout 2, but unfortunately it was cut from the final game. So instead, Karisu was written into the design documents for Fallout Van Buren, where she would have escaped from the slavers on her own and somehow ended up as the leader of the Blackfoot tribe. She would have been heavily involved in many of the quests related to the Blackfoot tribe, some of which were related to the main storyline. For example, one of the prisoners the player would need to capture and return to the Tibbetts facility was a man named Chagas, who was one of Karisu's rivals for leadership of the tribe. If the player resolved this quest in a way that Karisu approved of, then she would have become a recruitable companion. We don't know what her attributes would have looked like, but it's probably fair to assume she would have essentially been a female version of Sulik, well-versed in tribal lore and melee combat. Another companion linked to the events of Fallout 2 would have been Christina, who appeared in the previous game as a minor character named Chrissy. In Fallout 2, the player could encounter her as a teenage hostage being held by the new cons at Vault 15. Van Buren was written with the assumption that she had somehow survived the event, growing into an older and more capable potential companion. Unfortunately, there's not much written about her in the design documents. It was mentioned that she would be handy with a submachine gun, that she might cause problems if brought into the scavengers camp in Denver, and that she would have a personal quest involving finding a cure for her chronic insomnia. But that's about it. Next, we have Battery, an oddly named tribal from the even odder Cypher tribe. Battery would have been encountered fairly early in the game in the small town of Jericho. As with most members of the Cypher tribe, Battery was fascinated with machines, which prompted him to volunteer for work in the local desalination plant, so he could study the machinery that made it work. However, by the time the player shows up, he's already figured out how everything works, and he's starting to get bored, which would give the player the opportunity to lure him away as a potential companion, but at the cost of damaging his reputation with the local townsfolk. 
Statistically, Battery would have been useful for players who needed a researcher or mechanically-minded companion. Story-wise, he would have been able to point the player toward Mesa Verde, the home of the Cypher tribe, and a location that held information vital to progressing the main storyline. He also would have presumably been involved in some of the other various side quests in and around the Mesa Verde area. And then there's Xian, perhaps most notable for being one of the only companions in Fallout Van Buren who actually got a proper piece of concept art. A former member of the Shi from Fallout 2, Xian was a brilliant but stubborn young scientist who was recruited onto Victor Presper's research team but was becoming increasingly unhappy with the nature of her work and her position on the team. The player would have first encountered her outside of Boulder Dome. Like the player, Xan was infected with the New Plague, a direct result of Presper's grand plan. And as a result, she had to wear a sealed environmental suit to prevent the spread of the disease. The player would find her on the verge of death, her oxygen supply perilously low, and if they could assist her, they would be rewarded with information about Boulder Dome, Presper's research, and the New Plague. Choosing the proper dialogue options would have also allowed the player to recruit her into their party. As a companion, Xian would have been a brilliant scientist and a tremendous boon towards finding a cure for the New Plague. She would have been well-versed in manufacturing various items for the player, such as bullets and gunpowder, as well as other potentially unique biological weapons. It's also interesting to note that Xian was the only recruitable companion listed as a potential love interest, possibly becoming romantically interested in the player if they were exceptionally intelligent or charismatic. And finally, that brings us to one of the least fleshed out companions, Ashley. We know almost nothing about Ashley, who's mentioned in some of the design documents as being a skilled doctor and mechanic, but that's about it. No indication is given of where or how the player was supposed to meet her, and we know nothing about her planned personality or backstory. She's mentioned in the Burham Springs document as a potential solution to their mechanical problems, and again in the new Kanan design documents as being able to diagnose a schizophrenic supermutant. But since new Kanan was ultimately cut from the later game, it's possible that Ashley was also intended to be cut from the game as well. And that's all eight of the more conventional human companions that you could encounter, and possibly recruit, in Fallout Van Buren. Next time, we'll take a look at some of the stranger companions that you would have been able to recruit, including super mutants, ghouls, robots, and of course, your loyal canine companion. Uh, kind of. But until then, this is Retcon Raider, signing off. Thanks for listening. Oh, and remember... Although I do love talking about Fallout Van Buren, you can check out the hundreds of pages worth of incomplete design documents over at the Fallout Wikis. Links are in the description.